The Retirement Cafe podcast, stress-free account closures after a loved one's death with Vicky Wilson of Settled. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Retirement Cafe podcast with me, your host, Justin King. If you're thinking about your retirement or already retired, you're in the right place. My aim is to help you plan for and live a successful and meaningful retirement. Retirement is far more than just a financial event. It's a significant life event, a major transition, which will bring with it new challenges and opportunities. So each episode contains tips, information and inspiration to help you feel more informed and confident about your retirement. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Hello. And welcome. I'm so pleased you could join me for this week's episode. This week, I'm excited to share with you a conversation I had with Vicky Wilson. I met Vicky on a training course a few weeks ago where she was discussing the work that she and her company are doing around bereavement. I was intrigued by her business and the passion she has for it and wanted to learn more. In 2019, Vicky sadly lost her grandma. Like everyone else who's lost a relative, Vicky and her mother were then faced with all the admin that comes with dealing with the death of a loved one. Eventually, all accounts were finally closed, but the stress that they went through to get there will never be forgotten. The number of times she repeated the words, my grandma has died, seemed endless. Vicky and her mother realized that there was a gap in the market for a service that could deal with this and set up Settled. Settle removes the stress and difficult admin that follows a loved one's death. In our conversation, Vicky and I discuss the amazing work she's doing with her new business, Settled, the story behind Settled and what bereavement standards are and why industries should be working together to standardize the bereavement process. So without further ado, here's my conversation with Vicky Wilson. Welcome to the Retirement Cafe podcast, Vicky Wilson. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. My pleasure. Now, Vicky, may, many of our listeners won't know who you are. Now, I came across you and, and was inspired with what you're up to because you were a guest um, speaker on a webinar for uh, Solar members the other day. Now, for those who don't know that, um, Solar is the Society of Later Life Advisors, which I'm one of them. If you're looking for later life advice, find an advisor who is a Solar qualified member. But you were on the you were on the um on the webinar in essence to provide continuing continuing professional developments for solar advisors and you were telling us all about your new company and service etc and i went wow that's fantastic um it's called settled tell me all about settled yes okay so settled is the private sector equivalent of tell us once so for anybody that sadly lost a loved one mm. they may have come across the public sector service which will go and notify dvla council tax other public sector departments of the death we went through this process when my grandma died so we used tell us once we thought it was amazing yeah but what we found was there wasn't the equivalent to go and tell the banks the utilities the insurance providers the pension providers the telcos all of the other entities in the private sector um in one easy straightforward way and so we built settled so it's very much formed out of our bereavement our experience of bereavement we wanted to try and put that right and solve that problem for other families so let's slowly strip this back to the basics because unless you've done this you know or done this recently you don't know how much of a challenge this can be now mm. obviously i as a, in my work as a financial planner and working in with 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 you know the retired community i obviously we come across people dying mm. and if you think about it you're suddenly faced with that bereavement and that's obviously always going to be quite an emotional aspect of, 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 of sorting that out. Mm -hmm. um, but then you kind of get down to the nitty gritty, don't you, of doing the, doing the, the jobs of, oh, well, I've got to tell the bank and I've got to tell, I've got yeah. to tell, oh, that bills that I know I, you know, if it was a spouse, well, that, 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 that might be going to my, my husband or my wife or, you know, my, mm -hmm. uh, therefore I need to tell, all these people and the list goes on and on yeah. and on doesn't it and it's like yeah. and, and this is not a fun job is it you know because we all we're all faced by call centers yeah 
and people who you know press 17 for for the next operator and we really care for your call because but you, you know the waiting time is only 90 minutes and yeah. and i mean in my world insurance companies bless their souls whew, hard work hard work trying to get through through to it not only through to the company but to the right person so uh-huh. so there, it is um yeah this is this is a it's this is a tricky problem yeah. so how to settle solve this Yeah, it's a real problem. So as you said, um, if you think about 500,000 people on average die per year in the UK, most people will leave behind 15 to 20 accounts. So that's your financial, your digital and your household services. Okay. And that process of having to go and contact all those different companies takes most people around six to 10 hours. Uh And then it's up to two months of chasing back and forth. Yeah. Um, trying to get things resolved. So Settled is designed to be one very simple, safe web form. Okay, so we've gone and done lots of different audits with lots of different industry providers. We know what they need. We know what information they need to collect. So an individual is asked to upload their information, the death certificate, details on the person who's died. uh, And then we take we take care of the rest. So they just submit one form and then we send out the notifications to each and every company simultaneously. Oh. Um, we can either go and request the account to be closed down or transferred into another name. We'll ask for things like, please take off Mrs. Jones from the marketing communication so that Mr. Jones doesn't have to keep seeing his deceased wife name appear on letters if the letters are being sent to the, the home. Uh, and we essentially manage everything back and forth. So we act as that um, the intermediary. Uh, everything is tracked in one safe space. So there's a dashboard that the user can see. And so really, I mean, there will be cases where the the individual, the notifier will have to go and talk to a bank or an insurer. But for 95% of the cases that we're seeing, we can actually take away all of the admin. So you just have one central place. You can see what's happening at any given time. And it just means that for families and for professionals, they're spending maybe 15 minutes undertaking that form completion process versus six to 10 hours of going back and forth and dealing with a headache. Yeah. Amazing. Now, I can see maybe that if this was going on and I heard of settled and I or I found that there's a, there's a couple of things that I would worry about a little bit of mm-hmm. well who who's allowed to do it who's allowed to open in a settled account and start closing all these accounts how do I prove that I can I'm I'm uh, it's okay for me to do that yeah so it's a really good question we know what documentation the relevant organizations are going to need to see so before we do anything we have to have the proof of authority and the letter of authority or consent to act right so if we don't have that we cannot proceed there are then various questions that we'll ask so if there's a will um, we'll take that copy of the will we won't send it out unless it's absolutely needed but we use that to verify who the person is and their relationship to the deceased we also have on fido as our verification partner so that's the anti-fraud id check so we'll do a biometric facial id recognition check and we'll also go and make sure that the document against the person who is sending out the notification is valid so it's not a fraudulent copy of a passport or other means of identi- identity um so we we know what we know what needs to happen we know which um, individuals the organizations need to speak to there are cases where we'll go and have to go and talk to other executors but on the main part we're able to deal with the individual who has notified themselves as being either a professional that's acting on behalf of the deceased so that could be a probate practitioner or the next of kin or somebody that's um, in the immediate line of um, personal representation for the person who's died right right wow you've definitely thought about this um straight away then um i'm thinking this is expensive this is i mean you know you're going to take out take away eight to ten hours of my painful life or or non i'm sorry take about the pain out of my life not a painful life i've got a lovely life thank you (laughs) but (laughs) i'm glad to hear that (laughs) eight to ten hours of of something that i really don't want to do um you're gonna you're gonna charge me an arm and a leg aren't you no, we're free. We're free for the public. <laughs> I love that intro, though. <laughs> Set that up lovely. Um, no, so we're not charging a penny to the public. We're completely free. Um, we do charge professionals who use us, but we are free for all members of the public. 
Wow. Wow. And and okay, so how are you funded then? Because I, I really need to dig in a little bit more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Something, you know, not many things are free in this world nowadays. Well, as I said, so we, we charge a nominal fee to our um our professional users. So the idea there is obviously we're we're giving them back efficiency. Um, we're allowing them to deploy their staff to other higher value areas. Um, and that means that we can run for free for the public. Uh, we're also having conversations with service providers because what's happening is that as volume comes through, we're aggregating lots of data so we can understand where organizations are doing things really well and where they could be doing things better. Um, and so we, we're able to have those commercial conversations as well with with partners on the other side. But we, we're completely free for for families to use. Wow. Wow. And. Am I right? What, what's the kind of structure of of your of settled? Is it a, a limited company or is it, it what is, is it, right? Yeah, we're a limited company. Okay, okay. And you and you've in essence started um, in this COVID pandemic period. We did actually. Last week was the first time that five of our team were able to meet. So wow. we we've been working completely remotely for about a year now, um, recruiting great people, but um, many of them just have never met face to face, which is a it's a strange thing. Uh, but yes, we started just before the pandemic. So my grandmother passed away at the end of 2019, and I had this idea. I was working for Amazon at the time. Uh, I took a sabbatical from Amazon, went to explore the idea, three months unpaid leave, and thought I've got to give this a go. This is a real problem. A lot of other people seem to have this problem. And uh, and and that's where it started. So just just as COVID was becoming a reality and wasn't just that thing in China, um, we 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 were starting to to build up the concept for what settled would or could be. And mm -hmm. um, here we are a year later. Wow! Wow! So um, talking of Amazon mm. and all these other service providers who are we've never met and we're never going to see and um you know the facebooks of the worlds and the mm. and the and the, all these types of accounts can you close those yep so we uh we correspond with 750 organizations now wow. and that number's increasing because obviously as we see more volume coming through people are sending us more obscure uh, accounts that we maybe hadn't considered or they weren't the immediate ones on the list um so yes we are we're able to close pretty much all of the main players um and anything else that comes through then obviously we'll go and reach out proactively to those organizations and tell them who we are and start engaging with them too wow wow and do sorry i mean this is just this is really is genuine interest because um uh sadly i lost my sister last year um sorry and to hear um that. and you know I the I don't, I don't quite know what's happened with her Facebook account to be honest, but um, you know I have a feeling it's still in existence, um, and you know maybe even her passwords are not known. Mm. So how do you how do you get around? How do you you know I, I can imagine all these kind of digital things, you know people's photographs on. I mean I, I I've got a you know I, what have I got? I've got a, a Apple account as well, you know, so I've got photos there, etc. I can imagine that. Um, well, I, 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 I'm, you know, I'm sure even Kathy doesn't know, you know, what all the passwords in are. We, well, you change them quite regularly because I'm a bit on top of all that type of thing. So, you know, every mm -hmm. few months there are another randomized, <laughs> randomized yep. uh, um, password. Which is very organised of you, actually. I'm impressed because many people don't do that. Well, <laughs> so. I am in, I am in, I am in the kind of financial world, so uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bit kind of careful with this stuff. Um, yeah. But but is can you are all these people open for you to, to to be talking to them and kind of closing these types of accounts down? Yeah, we've been amazed actually at how responsive and how welcoming of this idea the service providers are. Um, we have to obviously show that we've got consent to act. So it's absolutely imperative that we have the the recognition and the approval to be that interface, to be that intermediary. But as long as we've got that permission, then we haven't had um, any significant pushback from, from the providers. So we've been really lucky. And the other thing that we're also doing alongside the build of Settled is pushing for what we call a bereavement standard. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of that actually is to bring together various different industry, cross-industry um, leads 
who are responsible for the bereavement experience, the customer care experience, to try and understand how do we get to a stage where things are better, more streamlined for customers, way beyond what we would do with Settled. It's really about changing policies, changing processes, pushing on things like, you know, why do we not, why are we not at the stage at the moment where we could have everybody submit a death certificate in digital format? What do we need to do to get to that stage so that people aren't being required to purchase multiple paper copies? Um, And so when you talk about, you know, assets, if you like, uh, when it comes to your Facebook or your Twitter or, you know, all the various different digital assets, that very much falls within the remit of the bereavement standard. Because until now, bereavement really hasn't been a very sexy thing to talk about. I mean, still not, but the pandemic has shone a light on the fact that there hasn't been a standard. It's not a regulated area that, you know, different companies do different things. And actually, that makes it very confusing for a consumer um, or for a customer who is dealing with the dizziness of death. There's tons of things going on. And actually, a lot of this stuff will be alien, right? So unless you've actually gone through a bereavement, you don't necessarily know what are all the steps to take. No. So there's a lot of work to do with the bereavement standard as well. Um, but some really encouraging progress has already been made. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you can also, I mean, I'm, I'm sure for for the um, insurance companies of the world, I mean, to be honest, they must have a nightmare really, because I know that the amount of, lost or what they what the bizarrely they call orphan assets you know policies that are never claimed policies that are never paid out and actually you mean you might think well that's really great for an insurance company because they're not having to pay out (laughs) but but actually it's all it's a it's all a pain in the backside for them as well because actually they continue to have to write out they continue having to do statements they continue Mm -hmm. having to kind of administer those funds when actually they, they, they i honestly do believe their intention is to get the assets to the right people but unless they're told so i i wondered um i i wondered if you were the um is it would it be possible? I don't know where you where you plan to take the business, but mm. I, I'm kind of imagining that I wonder whether you could do a a pre-mortem. <laughs> mm-hmm. So so that I could come along and I could register all my kind of stuff with you already mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and yep. maybe and maybe let you know who I think is going to be my executor or the person who will contact you yep. in the event of me getting, you know, tr- trampled by a herd of elephants let's hope that doesn't happen <laughs> it's also <laughs> unlikely in the uk but yes <laughs> maybe, maybe it's a safari park or something you know? um, <laughs> very unlucky <laughs> um, but, but, but would it i don't know whether that's possible yet yeah, would, you, yeah, yeah. Would, would that be possible to because uh, we, we do a we we try and obviously we know that death is going to happen to our clients yes. at some point and therefore we talk often about let, let's get everything in order do we know where the power yes. of attorney is do we know where the will is do we know yes. where all the estate documents are is yes. it if if one of the next of kin if something happens to you do they know that we're your advisor and we've got a copy of everything yeah. that you're going to need and i'm just absolutely you know, but we don't get we don't get involved in electric bills and and that type of thing but i i can imagine mm-hmm. i can imagine thinking well, well if we set up this service before it happens yep. that'd be a really great thing if it yep. was available yes it's a very natural product extension from where we are now and um, actually we see it in some of the behavior analytics so there is a subset of uh users who store documents and and give us details and then just never hit the submit button and when we go to them and say is everything okay is can we help you like, oh yeah no that's fine i'm just getting i'm just getting ready ah. um so uh, yeah so there's there's definitely um there's definitely room for us to explore that area i think we just wanted to make sure that to begin with we were able to satisfy that main pain point and and really take that away and build something that is secure and reliable and gets the job done uh, and now that we're really satisfied with what we've got and this is early days but we're happy with that product then yes we can start looking at different ways to make life easier not just after a death has occurred but um, as people are thinking about and getting ready for for things brilliant brilliant um so people are now listening to this and they're thinking fantastic i want to know more about settled um uh is it only available you have to hit a website or do you have a website and an app or what do people actually have to do where yes. do they find you and what do they what how do they access your service great so they can go to settle.care so that's the website we're not a, a mobile app yet we are a web app right. uh, and, and all they need to- is spelled s-e-double-t-l-d is that right exactly so we've dropped the last d yeah okay 
Uh, yeah, so they'll go to settle.care and then they can hit a nice big button to get started. And it's really, really s simple and straightforward. So they just need to uh, give us their initial details and then they'll be taken through a form. And that is literally it. And then at the end of that form, they'll have everything that they need and we'll keep them updated with progress from that point on. Great. Um, uh, and then presumably there's some kind of security that they have for when they log in and, and, and log off and that type of thing. Yes, yes, yes. Settled was actually designed by somebody who back in his earlier days was paid by big financial institutions to try and hack into their security systems. Right. So it's been, yes. <laughs> so it's been designed by somebody with um, with an obsession for security and it, and it follows all the, the various protocols it needs to. Um, and we're running on AWS, which is one of the most uh, secure cloud providers so we, we hit all the security ticks you've still got links in with your amazon people. that's it that's it <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you can't escape um, never <laughs> it's true aws is amazon web services for the, anyone who doesn't realize um, <laughs> that's true yes. um uh i'm showing my geekiness um the the professionals that you work with um mm -hmm. so uh kind of pro the probate specialists so that'll be lawyers and um uh like some accountants obviously can do mm -hmm. probate now mm -hmm. um how do is that do they hit the same website or do, is there a specific place that they go to to kind of work out how to use your services Yes, so because we're still fairly fairly new, uh, we launched to probate practitioners at the end of November 2020. Um, we've been doing one-to-one -one onboarding sessions with with those um, firms. Uh, so it's a, it's a similar process. They'll reach out to us and then we will get them set up in the system. We'll show them how it works, make sure that we've answered all the questions that they might have. Um, but we do plan to actually build in um, onboarding into the, the website fairly soon. So they'll just be able to go and self-serve. But until now, it's been more of a one-to-one -one, um, relationship with account managers on our side. Brilliant. Brilliant. Mm. Um, anything I've not asked you? No, I think you've been pretty, pretty <laughs> thorough, pretty <laughs> thorough. <laughs> well, I, I was really, you know, I, lo I lo as I say, when, when, I, when I first met you and heard you talk, I thought, oh, well, that's fantastic. What a, what a wonderful. Thank you, you know, so you've, much. You've, you've identified a problem. You're providing a solution that is going to be really worthwhile. Um, you're providing it free. To, to, to the members of the public. I mean, what, I know, what, I'm told I'm crazy. <laughs> what gets better than that? Well, you know, you're giving something back and you're charging the lawyers. I mean, no, no, I, uh, plenty of lawyers do listen to this, so I forgive you. <laughs> um, um, the problem is the lawyers will then pass it on to their clients. But anyway, that, that's just the way it is. <laughs> I mean, yeah, people have a choice. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, well done for providing, Thank you um, so providing much. a service that really is needed. I mean, you know, Gordon Bennett. Um, I've, I've sat on the phone trying to get through to provide providers and I'm alive, let alone yeah, trying to do painful. it when I'm deceased. Or, or, or someone having to do it. I was going to say, you'd, you'd be amazing if you were doing that from the grave. <laughs> Maybe we could come back and haunt some of the bad providers. You know? <laughs> yeah, interesting concept. <laughs> no, no, um, thank you so much for having for having me on the, the podcast and the show. It's really, really appreciated. No, really, really great. Thank you. Uh, thank you once again. Thanks. Thank you, Wilson. Thanks once again to Vicky Wilson for sharing her story with us. To find out more about Settled and Bereavement Standards, check out the show notes on our website at theretirementcafe.co.uk, where you'll also find some useful links, including one to sign the Bereavement Standards petition. As ever, if you've enjoyed this episode, please do leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, as this really does help more people like you to find us. I would like to thank Dibby Boy for taking the time to write a review after sitting down and recording an interview with me, which will be released in a few weeks' time. He gave the Retirement Cafe podcast a five-star review, saying it was an absolute pleasure to speak with Justin. Can't wait to listen to the podcast. Thank you, Dibby Boy, otherwise known as Ian Dib. Did you know that all the podcasts are available to listen to or watch on my YouTube channel? If you prefer to watch my conversations, simply head to YouTube and search for Justin King MFP. So until next time, I'm Justin King, helping you feel more informed in your retirement. Mm -hmm.